Hi, I'm Greg Marcus. I'm the pastor of Imperial Valley Christian Center. This is our Sunday morning church service via the internet. Hallelujah. Thank God for the internet is all I can say. Hallelujah. 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 Well, right now we're on this subject. Jesus taught his disciples to decree. Jesus taught his disciples to decree. We've been talking about the prayer of decreeing, and I want to focus in on this part for a little bit. Jesus taught his disciples to decree. So why don't we turn over to John chapter 14, the gospel of John chapter 14. Hallelujah. The gospel of John chapter 14. And before we get started, let me say this. Thank you so much for being a part of this uh, ministry with us, of, of coming together with us to study the word, to study God's word, to study the Bible with us, and to partake of this ministry. Our, our job is to grow little Jesuses, little uh, Jesuses going around the world doing the works of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much for being a part of that with us. Hallelujah. Let's turn over to John chapter 14, verse 9. This is the part we've been looking at lately where Jesus is teaching his disciples how to do his works using this prayer of decreeing, using what, you know, I like to call this Mark 11, 23, speak to the mountain and faith and it will move thing. I'm calling that decreeing. Hallelujah. And here Jesus is teaching his disciples to do that, to do this Mark 11, 23, speak to the mountain and faith thing in order to do his works. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 9, Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Verse 11, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe me, on the evidence of the works themselves. Verse 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask. Or we're going to see that word means decree or can mean decree. And I think decree fits the context better. And I will do whatever you ask, you demand, you decree in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask here in the NIV, it says ask me for anything in my name, which kind of doesn't make sense to ask someone for something in their name. And there's a variation in there. So it should probably be, you may ask anything or you may demand anything in my name and I will do it. You may demand anything in my name and I will do it. Hallelujah. 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 But let's back up a little bit here to verse 12, which we've been on for a couple of weeks. Hallelujah. Very, this is Jesus speaking. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Whoever believes in me, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Very truly, I, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. If we believe in Jesus, we're supposed to be doing the works that he's been doing. What kind of works did you? He went about doing good, healing, causing the blind to see, the lame to walk, all that kind of stuff. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing. So I wanted to talk about this part again is, what does Jesus mean when he says, believe it, whoever believes in me? What does he mean by that? He doesn't just mean, you know, believe that I exist, or we could say believe, you know, there he's to believe that I exist, you know, <laughs> believe that I existed. You know, we could say, well, believe in Jesus. Does that mean believe he existed? No, it doesn't mean believe he existed, but it means believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Watch, turn over to Matthew chapter 16. Let me go through a few of these again for you. Jesus was the Messiah. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, 
he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Verse 14, they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Verse 15, but what about you? He said, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Let's go back a second. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. Turn over to John chapter 11. This is the story of when uh, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and Martha comes to talk to Jesus about this before, you know, the raising of the dead. And I guess we can start at verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Verse 22, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Verse 26, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Verse 27, yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Jesus is the Messiah. That's all I want you to see. Jesus was the Messiah. Turn over to Acts chapter 5. Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. Who, what does it mean to believe? To believe he is the Messiah. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus wants to get. He, he wants us to believe he's the Messiah. And what's the result of him being the Messiah? Hallelujah. We can do the works. Those who believe in him can do his works, can do Messiah works. Hallelujah. Look here in Acts chapter 5. And let's, let me see here. Hallelujah. I'm just going to read the one scripture. This is a story of when the, uh, the apostles were arrested for uh, uh, healing the lame man and preaching about Jesus. And in verse 41, it says, As the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name because they'd been on this little trial or this inquiry. Verse 42, day after day in the temple courts and from how, here's the part I want you to see, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. This is after Jesus has died on the cross. He's risen from the dead. He's ascended to the right hand of the Father. And here Peter is telling them, Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. That's what they were proclaiming. The disciples, the apostles, the followers of Jesus. He's, they're proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Woo! Jesus. Why is it good news? Because everybody had been waiting for the Messiah to show up to make things right. Everybody had been waiting for the Messiah to show up and make things right. <laughs> it's like the, the line from uh, 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 the Chronicles of Narnia where, where it says, <laughs> I think it's Mr. Beaver says, when Aslan comes in sight, everything that's wrong will be made right. That's what people had been waiting for. They'd been waiting for the Messiah to show up so that when he came in sight, everything that's wrong would be made right. And now they're telling the people they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Listen, people, listen, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. <laughs> well, you know, we sort of skip a step. Hallelujah. But what they're really saying to them is, the Messiah has come. It's Jesus. The Messiah has come. The one we've been waiting for to arrive, to make all the, he's come. It's Jesus. They never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Go over to Acts chapter 8. And then there was a persecution, in Acts chapter 8, there's a persecution of the Christians, and so they have to get out of Dodge. 
And in verse four, it says this, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Verse five, Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. What did he proclaim? The Messiah. Hallelujah. What does that mean? He, the Messiah has come. It's Jesus. The Messiah. They've been waiting for the Messiah. We know that because when Jesus spoke to one of the Samaritan women, they've been waiting for the Messiah. Hallelujah. And now Philip is going down. He's telling the Messiah has come. The Messiah has come. Hallelujah. It's Jesus. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and the, saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. Hallelujah. Why was there great? Because many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. Those who had inspired. Pure spirits, the spirits were driven out. Hallelujah. And what does this demonstrate to these people? That what uh, Philip had told them was the truth. What had he proclaimed to them? The Messiah. Hallelujah. He says the Messiah has come. Jesus is the Messiah. And then he begins to do uh, these signs and wonders, healing people, causing the lame to walk, casting out demons. Hallelujah. Many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. And how does he do those? In the name of Jesus, in the name of this one. He's saying is the Messiah. The Messiah has come. Hallelujah. Jesus was the Messiah. Turn over to Acts. Let's start reading at verse 1. Acts chapter 17, verse 1. When Paul and his companions had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. This is the Apostle Paul, where there was a Jewish synagogue as was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scripture. So he did this for three Sabbath. Some people get upset because I stay on the subject. For, <laughs> he did it for three Sabbath days. <laughs> Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead this Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah. Hallelujah. So the, the story of Jesus, the Messiah, didn't fit exactly with their picture of the Messiah. There was, well, if he was Messiah, why was he killed? Why, why did he die on the cross? Why, you know, uh, that doesn't sound like the Messiah. So he's explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah. He said, hallelujah. Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Well, what does Messiah mean? What would Messiah do when he came? What is the picture of Messiah that these people had? Hallelujah. That, that they show up, you know, Philip shows up to the Samaritans. The people show up there, Messiah, Jesus. Is, when people heard that, what, well, what does this word Messiah mean? No, they were talking about some of these people understood. What was it? What was their picture of Messiah? Turn over to Matthew chapter 22. Why was that good news to them? Why were they excited to hear it? Why was it a good thing? Matthew chapter 22 and hallelujah. Let's start at verse 41. Matthew chapter 22, verse 41. What does Messiah mean? That's what I want you to see. What does Messiah mean? Hallelujah, hallelujah. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, what do you think about Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. Verse 43, he said to them, how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. Verse 45, if then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? In other words, David wouldn't call one of his 
uh, descendants, his children, grandchildren, whatever, great-great-grandchildren. He wouldn't call them Lord. Uh, David would be above his children, above his grandchildren, just because he's their great-great-great-grandfather. Hallelujah. Can you see that? If Dave, verse 45, if David then calls him Lord, how can he be his son? Hallelujah. No one would say a, a word in reply. And from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. But let's go back a, a second. He said to them, how is, what is the discussion? What is Jesus asking them? What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? So we know Jesus is talking about the Messiah. And what scripture does he quote here? He's he quotes this. He said, he said to them, how is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, where did David say this? Where did David say this thing about the Messiah? He said it in the 110th Psalm. So when Jesus says David said this thing about the Messiah, he's quoting what David said in Psalm 110 verse 1. And it says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Verse 2, the Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion, saying, rule in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Verse 2, the Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion saying, rule in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now there's a couple things I want you to see from that. And number one is that this Psalm 110 verse one is the most often quoted scripture in the New Testament. Psalm 110 verse one is the most often quoted scripture in the New Testament. Why am I telling you that? Because I want you to see number one, that this scripture was important to the disciples. When they wrote the New Testament, when Paul, when uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when all those books were written and the epistles of John and the book of Revelation, this scripture here, hallelujah, that we know because Jesus quotes it as talking about the Messiah, we know it's talking about the Messiah, was the most quoted scripture in the New Testament. This scripture was the most quoted scripture in the New Testament, and that should tell you two things. Number one, that this idea of the Messiah is the idea that the disciples of Jesus had. This idea, this Psalm 110 verse 1 idea of the Messiah is the idea of the Messiah that the disciples of Jesus had, that Jesus had. We know that's the picture of Messiah that Jesus had because he quotes this scripture. He refers to it as being about the Messiah. Hallelujah. And the second thing I want you to see is the picture. Hallelujah. What the disciples understood uh, the Messiah was to be. And what was he to be? The Messiah was to be like, I like one uh, translation. Uh, it's called the Voice Bible. And it puts it this way. Sometimes it'll say, the redeeming king. Woo! Hallelujah. That's what the Messiah was. The Messiah was a king. You can see from that, he's seated on the throne. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Yahweh says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Where is the Lord? Where is Yahweh? He's seated in heaven. Hallelujah. Hi, who's seated at? Jesus. I said, Jesus, the Messiah. The Messiah is seated at his right hand. Hallelujah. Until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Verse 2, Yahweh will extend your mighty scepter. Who has mighty scepters? Kings have mighty scepters. From Zion saying, rule in the midst. Who rules? Kings rule. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So that's the picture. That's the most quoted scripture about the Messiah in the New Testament. In fact, it's the most quoted scripture uh, about anything in the New Testament. Hallelujah. That tells you how important this idea of Messiah was. And it gives you a picture of what they saw Messiah was. What did they see him? As a redeeming king. As the king. As the great king who had come. As the great king who was coming to deliver. As in uh, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. As in the chronicles of Narnia. Aslan. Hallelujah. The great king. Hallelujah. When Aslan comes inside, all that's wrong will be be made right. Hallelujah. That's the picture they had of Jesus, of the king showing up and making everything right. Hallelujah. 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 Now, when we get to this part, we start talking about a king. 
in our brain, we automatically start going to a physical, material, physical world king. We start thinking about the king, you know, of the United States or something, you know. People get these ideas into their head that God's talking about, that Jesus is talking about some kind of material, physical, earthly reign. Hallelujah. And at the end of time, you know, uh, uh, God will come down to earth. Hallelujah. Jesus will return to the earth. But that's not what they're talking about here. Jesus is already the Messiah. We saw that, right? He was proclaimed. They were proclaiming, the Messiah has come. Jesus is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the rain they're talking about isn't some kind of earthly rain because Jesus didn't tell us, okay, disciples, here's the ticket. I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to heaven. Meanwhile, you guys take over the Roman Empire and install a Christian as emperor. Hallelujah. I mean, actually that, you know, 300 years later or so that happened. Hallelujah. But you know, from the moment that the Roman Empire became officially a Christian empire, Christianity began to lose its power. From the moment that the Roman Empire became an official Christian empire, Christianity began to be unable to do the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. What happened there when Philip went to Samaria? To he did the works of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can you see that? Why were Peter and John arrested? For doing, what did they do? They healed that man who had been lame from his mother's birth. How did they heal him? His name, Jesus' name, through faith in his name. Hallelujah. The Messiah. He, Peter says to him, uh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I to thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. So they were doing works in the name of Jesus. But the minute, the minute the Christians, you know, the intellectual Christians, the super Christians, the super saints, the ones running everything, the big shots, they began to, yeah, yeah I think we should take over the empire. We should be running the empire. All of a sudden, all that stuff stopped. Hallelujah. Christianity began to lose its power once Christians decided they would rather have earthly power than heavenly power. Hallelujah. Christianity began to lose its power once the, the, the big shot Christians began to realize, well, it's easier to get earthly power than it is to heal the lame. It's easier to, to, to sign up there next to Caesar and have him do what we ask than it is to cause the blind to see and the lame to walk. Hallelujah. And what happened as a result? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Christianity began to lose its power. And so we're in a state right now where Christians are like, oh, well, we need to take over. We need to do things. We need to make things happen. We need to take over the government. Hallelujah. You know what you need to make happen? The works of Jesus. You know what you need to be focusing on? The works of the Messiah. Hallelujah. You know what you need to be putting your effort into? the works of Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 Instead of focus on what your efforts can achieve, what your power can achieve, start focusing on what Jesus' power can achieve. What did Paul say in Ephesians chapter 6? He said this. He said, uh, <laughs> be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's who's might we're supposed to be, not in our great intellectual strategic ability of working our way, working our way through the establishment, working our way, you know, and all this, and taking over these things for you. You're not taking them over for Jesus, you're taking them over for yourself. Knucklehead, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, what does Paul say a little bit later? Watch, turn over to Ephesians chapter 6, let me read that to you. What I want you to see here, I want you to see it's not talking about some kind of earthly kingdom. Hallelujah. Jesus is reigning over the universe. He's reigning over creation. Hallelujah. He's not interested in reigning over the Roman Empire. He's not interested in reigning over the United States. Hallelujah. He's got his kingdom. Hallelujah. That no one can take from him. He is the king of the universe. He is the king of all creation. He is the great king. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 6 for a second. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Watch two little letters. Verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Let's read these few, few verses here. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Whose mighty power? Oh, no, be strong in your own power. Be strong in your strategic outsmarty thinking. No! Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Whose armor are we? We're supposed to go down to the store and buy some of that that used armor from, from the wars? Is that? Yeah, I'm going to buy myself. <laughs> I'm going to buy myself some used armor from the wars. Hallelujah. I'm going to buy myself a gun. That's my armor. <laughs> I'm going to buy myself a rifle. That's my. Is that the armor? Put on the full armor of God. Put on God's armor, God's armor, Hallelujah. so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, not mankind's schemes, against the devil's schemes. For our, verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. For our struggle is not against flesh, but against the rulers, against the authority. The flesh and blood rulers? No, no, he just said it's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers. The flesh and blood rulers? The human rulers? No, he just finished telling us the struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. In their mind, this heaven above us, hallelujah. That's what they mean, the heavenly. They mean this, the sky, the atmosphere, what we would call. They don't talk about the heaven where God lives. They're talking about this atmosphere is the heavens to them. In the heavenly realms, there are, uh, what, spiritual forces of evil. Hallelujah. Who's going to, co- how are you going to overcome the spiritual forces of evil? You're going to pull out your six gun. Take this, you spiritual forces of evil. Pow, pow, pow. Is, is that how it works? I, no. What do you need to do to overcome these spiritual forces? of you? you need to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. You need to put on God's armor, not man's armor. You need to put on God's armor, not man's armor, in order to overcome these spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Does that make sense to you? Hallelujah. So, yes, the Messiah is a king. He's not an earthly king. He's not that low. He's above all those kings. Hallelujah. Those spiritual forces in the, in the evil realms, in the, they work through people. They aren't people. They work through people who will yield to them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is supposed to be working through us as we yield to him. God is supposed to be, Jesus, the Messiah, is supposed to be working through us as we yield to him. Hallelujah. And what is it that Jesus is going to do? What does it mean that he's Messiah? What is the picture of Messiah they had? What is it that Jesus, uh, as we are strong in the Lord, and as we put on the arm, what kind of stuff is he? Is he going to be attacking men? Is he going to be attacking humans? No, he's going to be attacking these spiritual powers. Watch, turn over to Acts chapter 10. Jesus was the Messiah. What did the Messiah look like? Here's a good picture. Let me start reading at verse 36. You know that this is Peter preaching. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace, of shalom through Jesus Christ. Woo! What was the message that God sent? Hallelujah. Announcing the good news of peace, of shalom, of well-being, of wholeness, of completeness through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does it mean uh, that Jesus is reigning? What does it mean that Jesus 
is the king. What does it mean that Jesus, the Messiah, is a king? Hallelujah. It means he's supposed to establish this peace. What does this peace mean? It means wholeness, wellness, hallelujah, well-being, hallelujah. As we yield to him and do his works, we establish his works, hallelujah, here on the earth. Look what it says. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. How God anointed Jesus. You know, you could say how God messiahed. It's the same word, anointed. What does messiah mean? It means the anointed one. What does Christ mean? It means the anointed one. Hallelujah. You could say how God messiahed him, how God uh, Christed him, how God Christed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. He anointed, you know, on earth, people anoint with oil. Hallelujah. When uh, God wanted to anoint a king, he'd tell the priest or the prophet, and they'd go anoint the king. When God wanted to anoint a priest, he'd tell them, they'd go anoint the king with oil. Hallelujah. But here is Jesus of Nazareth. How is God anointing him as the Messiah? Hallelujah. With the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the real thing, the Holy, not just the type, but with the Holy Spirit. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, how God Christed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, how God messiahed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Hallelujah. Who are we supposed to put on this armor of God to fight? Who is God? Who is Jesus? He said, um, sit at my right hand until I make all thine enemies a footstool for your feet. So who are the enemies that Jesus is putting under his feet? Who are the enemies that the Messiah is putting under his feet? All who were under the power of the devil. Woo! He released all who were under the power of the devil. Who's he defeating? The devil. Who's he releasing from? The devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a king reigning over these enemies. And that's our job as his followers, as his disciples, as those who are in Christ Jesus. Our job is to do the works of Jesus, to release people from the bondage of the enemy, to turn that as the apostle, as Jesus told the apostle Paul in Acts chapter 26, it said, to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Hallelujah. That's why we need the armor of God. Because uh, let me clue you in here. All your six guns, all your shotguns, all your uh, whatever those weapons, you know, uh, machine guns or whatever they're called, you know, uh, they don't even affect the devil. Not even slightly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're putting your trust in those things rather than the armor of God. Hallelujah. Don't put your trust in men. Don't trade the power of men for the power of God. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might so we can cause the Messiah's reign to show up on earth. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, I'm out of time. <laughs> but I'm not finished. So come back next week. Thank you so much for being part of this with us. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like, subscribe, notification bell, leave us a good comment. You can share it with others. That would really help us. and We'd appreciate it. I ask you as a favor, please, if you can, share it with other people. Also, if you want to learn more, if you want to contribute to our ministry, you can go to our website, www.ivchristiancenter.com. You can contribute to our ministry there by clicking on the Feed the Ox button, and you'll be able to give a donation through PayPal. Thank you so much for all of those of you who are continuing to support this ministry, this teaching ministry, this producing little Jesus's ministry, hallelujah. going around, hallelujah, going around, doing what Jesus would do, uh, uh, healing, doing good, and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hall I'll see you later. Bye-bye.